Podcast, your rugby draft podcast. Thanks for downloading and listening. I'm Bruce Wilkinson, and joining me again in the booth. Well, you, you would be in the booth, but um, I guess you're not, are you? You're a, a roving reporter in, uh, in Monaco. Uh, describe the mood on the street in Monaco. The mood on the street in Monaco is is buzzing, actually. Uh, I'm here for, for oddly enough, I've been accosted by well, it was actually five members of the prestigious Billy Waitangi League uh, <laughs> on fantasy rugby draft two, who have just inundated me with, with questions about rugby league. So I can tell you here that uh, people are pretty excited about the start of the season. Excellent. So, yeah, um, it's, uh, it's, all, it's all very positive. So um, as you can probably tell, uh, Wanaka is in the deep dark south of the South Island. Uh, uh, the connection there is a little bit ropey, but we're dedicated to, to getting you the, the news and the notes. So uh, we got Mossman on the phone to, to discuss through the team sheets as well. We're recording this on uh, Thursday afternoon, February the 25th. Most of the teams have come through. There's a few South African teams that haven't and the Sunwolves. Um, a little bit of admin, you can follow us on Twitter at Fantasy Rugby Draft, that's Fantasy R-U-G Draft, or drop us a note at support at fantasyrugbydraft.com. Uh, first of all, Mossman, it's a pretty monumental day in the life of our podcast. We've got our first reviews. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if I want to hear this or not, actually. Well, so I think um, most of them, obviously... Uh, 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 written in the spirit that the podcast is done, with a little bit of tongue in cheek and a little bit of let's not take ourselves too seriously, but let's see what we can uh, we can produce for, for for the for the for the audience out there. So let me read a couple of you. Um, the first one here says uh, from Saha three two zero one. Great podcast, Super Rugby Fantasy game, similar format to NFL where you draft your team heaps better than the salary cap game. Keep up it. Perfect, that sounds great. The next one uh, is from a fella, uh, Rebels FTW in Australia. These guys are passionate about rugby and their conversations are entertaining and informative. Keep it up, boys. Uh, and the last one, uh, and the last one, I've, I'm only going to uh, pull a small bit out of it, but uh, he says, Sure, Mossman seems to have an unnatural obsession with Charlie Nato, and Bruce frequently forgets players' names, but for me, it provides the listener with a good balance of insight, humour and enthusiasm. <laughs> Which I thought was quite amusing. <laughs> I think they've summed that up pretty well, actually, yeah. They've, um, they've clearly missed the uh, review by my mum, though, which said that this is the greatest podcast of all time. Um, <laughs> and, I, and I couldn't help but think when you said that uh, the reviews were in the spirit of the podcast that they'd be poorly written with um, grammatical errors all through it. But other than that, um, that that's all good. I was looking for Nick Spate and uh, Michael Flatley in there as well, but I couldn't see it. Right, so let's get into the, uh, the mm. team news. Um, the first one up, we're going to go as they, as they were... Um, as they released. So looking at the Hurricanes, not a hell of a lot of surprises here. Lamapi in midfield with Asso. Uh, Dane Coles has picked up an injury, so he's out. Uh, Blade Thompson playing at lock. Um, I guess there's, there's not too many surprises in here, Mossman? Not really. Uh, the, the Coles' thing is a blow, but if you pick the Hurricanes front row, chances are I uh, bet you've done it fairly highly on your draft, and I think you're still going to play them anyway. I think the uh, Sumo touched on the the replacement hooker who will be standing in, whose name actually escapes me right now, but I think along with with him and uh, Reg Goods and Tumanga Allen, um, there's there's still enough there, so it's it's not like you're going to replace them with with some other front row. Uh, Vince also, I guess we had. Uh, a taste for that uh, based on last week, so that probably doesn't come as a massive surprise either, although Peter Aki was, was kind of fancied, I guess, in the sense that he's more of a name uh, mm-hmm. than Vince Hasso. Mm-hmm. But uh, like you say, other than that, uh, yeah, it's what we were expecting. Uh, how do you think they'll run out, I guess? The Brumbies had a pretty good defence last year, and we'll get onto their team, but it's a pretty star-studded team that they've named. It is. Uh, I I mean, the, the gut feeling is that this would be a high-scoring game, especially early mm. in the season. Maybe the defensive systems aren't as tight as they often be. So I think you're starting all your usual Hurricanes with a pretty high level of competence. Yeah, OK. All right. Um, I know we've got a lot to get through, so we'll, we'll chomp into the next one. Uh, the Kings. Uh, I, I've got a note here to say strategy for Kings players. So, so what do you, what do you, what do you even want to talk about here? I mean, I guess that the talking point is, is Elga Watts has got the fly half position and that's, and maybe the number eight Jack Singlebrick in terms of fantasy, fantasy goodness. Well, across all the leagues that I've participated in, I can say that only Elga Watts has been drafted. 
out of the entire King squad. And for me, that's exactly how it should be. Uh, we'll take, I guess, a bit of a wait and see attitude towards the Kings generally. Mm. Uh, and other than Alga Watts, I mean, Alga Watts is, is a backup player. Chances are you're not having to use him at this stage of the season. So let, let's see how things pan out after week one. Uh, and if it, some, maybe some options emerge, but at this stage, I'm staying well clear. Yeah, so someone asked us that on Twitter. Someone said, you know, were any of the Kings players drafted? And if you look at the average draft position um, of all the players, and if you say that your squad is uh, 17 players, so 10 rounds of 170 players, they weren't in the top 170 picks. So no no, <laughs> no Kings players was in the 170, not even Elga Watts. So that probably says all you need to know. Uh-huh. But, but invariably, something will pop out of that. So you need to probably keep a really good note on, on the on the... Scorers, have a look at who's producing this weekend because you might be able to pick up a little bit of goodness that no one else has seen. Absolutely. I mean, chances are, like you say, that someone will pop at some point, and as you've just alluded to, they're all on the waiver wire effectively, so Mm. there's an opportunity there to possibly pick somebody up who could help you out in certain positions. Yeah, I'm curious to see how Jurgen Visser will go. There's one that I'm just keeping a close eye on. Um, okay, let's move on to the Blues. I guess the first point to note is it's good to see we're going to have our hands full with Tainaru Manga and, and team sheets and leaking stuff to the mess and to the press. It looks like it's Dave Rennie Mark too because I think we were batting 250 <laughs> in terms of selections. <laughs> um, so Reno Ranger on the bench, Marley Sal starts. Um, he's listed actually as a fly half in Fantasy Rugby Draft, which um, came through from our data provider. Um, there's not much we can do at this point because a lot of teams have already drafted, so we don't usually change the position of a, of a player, even if it's this radically out of position. It's the same with the Hurricanes midfielders, they're outside, uh, they're listed as outside backs, but it's the same rule for everybody, so uh, we're all in the same boat. But what do you make of Rene Ranger in the bench? Uh, I guess this is probably injury-related in the sense that they're just trying to ease him back in, mm. um, although Sumo did mention that they've obviously got some you know, wraps on Sal. Um, mm. Yeah, so I guess we'll just have to see how he goes and how much time Ranger comes off the bench. But uh, I'd imagine, yeah, I mean, given how highly touted that Ranger was uh, in fantasy rugby draft circles anyway, it's going to come up as a bit of a blow to people. So they'll definitely be hoping that this is just a short-term thing. Yeah, so a few people have said, well, what do you do if you don't have a backup midfielder on your on your bench? So they've got two studs in your midfield. Um, would you... You know, I guess it sounds a bit ridiculous at this point. Some people are asking, would you drop Ranger? And you wouldn't, obviously. But the point being that you must have some space somewhere. Your, your last outside back or your backup loose forward to be able to pick up a midfielder. And there are a few knocking about that you could pick up. Matt Carrara is a good option that we'll get onto a little bit later. But um, I, I would keep Ranger and just hope for better things. I think it's injury related as well. Akira Yuani, little knock as well. Obviously, he hadn't recovered enough. Um, is that how you see it too? Uh, I think it's the only way you can see it. I mean, with uh, the Jerome Kano thing, you, mm. you'd automatically assume that this opens the door for, for Ioana. You know, if there was any doubt that, that he would be picked anyway. So, I, I, yeah, I genuinely don't see there's any other reason than that. Okay. And, and probably the biggest talking point that, that you and I have kind of debated with the rest of the world over the off-season is Matt Duffy at fullback. So, um, reading the article... Um, in terms of the team team naming, it certainly sounded as though Matt Duffy's not quite ready yet to settle into a role, a prominent role at fullback, and that's why Vicenier got the 15. Did you read that article? Do you see that kind of inclination? I didn't see that article, uh, so that's actually the first I've heard of it. But mm. uh, it's it's one of those situations. If you were running a sweepstake on the Blues back three uh, and managed to win it by picking <laughs> the actual team, then you've done quite well because I think as as we've sort of moved through the preseason and spoken to various people, it's definitely not a back three that we would have picked, uh, mm. you know, based on the things that we've heard and perhaps on personal preference. Uh, I mean, on a personal note, I'm happy to see Vissin here. It's someone that I've uh, certainly uh, invested in um, mm-hmm. in my draft. So happy that he gets the first crack, and, and you can't help but feel that if he takes that opportunity, there will be a lot of reasons to perhaps um, move him out of the team at all. Um, but I, I guess the, the the kind of the wild card in some ways is to be Lee because he wasn't mm-hmm. someone that I believe we even mentioned. Um, mm-hmm. It was almost like he was out of the equation. So but as it turns out, it's it's been Lamb who's the, the odd man out. So, um, yeah, a really interesting selection. 
I had I have a note here actually. I, I saw that you picked him up. I got an email notification through. I can't remember if it was this morning or late last night. I think it was this morning actually when the team was named. And you you picked up Tavita Lee. Um, is that just a bit of a hit and hope, or is there a theory there? Who did you drop for him? Was it someone that got named? I don't remember exactly who was dropped, but I think this would come under the category of trying to screw other people in your league. Um, <laughs> it would literally have been, here's someone that someone else might get some value out of that could be used, um, potentially against me. Um, so I'm just, I'm just going to take him and, and stash him away and see what happens. Okay. All right. Um, any more on the blues? Uh, no. Um, I, yeah. I mean, let's see if they live up to the hype. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to Friday night's game. Should be a belter. Yeah, definitely. And speaking sure. of Friday night, Highlanders, um, the one question we had was in midfield, and so Theo Rangi Walden picks it up. Now, there was big raps <laughs> on him, um, and, and that's what uh, Sumo said, and a few other folks seem to be coming out now and saying that they knew that this was going to happen a little bit after the fact, but um, I, I, I'm... I'm quite excited to see how he goes with Fekitoa up against uh, Moala and, and Ranger. Uh, does it, is Walden owned in many of your leagues? Uh, that would be zero. Mm, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, uh, like, a, yeah, a, a real bolter, I guess, in that sense. So, uh, yeah, once again, let's see how he goes. I mean, I, I, I don't know enough about him that I'd be comfortable starting him. So, I, you know, I. I wouldn't pick him up at this point. Um, I think, once again, it's a bit of a waiting brief. Yeah, I wonder if it's probably useful for people who've got Rene Ranger or a few of these folks to drop your extra loose forward or your extra lock or extra outside back or something like that to pick up Walden to start. Uh, I think he's an, he's a really good option to, to, to go in there because certainly that 12 spot for the um, Highlanders produced points um, on occasion, certainly with um, Buckman there as well. So I think it's a good system to be able to get fantasy rugby points out of it. So I, I, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be too hesitant in, in picking him up, but you, you need to find the right balance and it needs to be the right situation. Squire at number eight, no white lock at all. Um, I've I got a note here. I just, do, do you think that, uh, that white lock knew that uh, Liam Squire was going south when he signed his contract? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's white lock. I think he's probably a little bit more versatile as a player, isn't he? So mm-hmm. he's, uh, he Dane pops Randall. up on the blind side. Yeah, yeah, pops up on the blind side, I think, for for the Crusaders at, and Canterbury um, as well. So it might not be you know like-for-like like thing. Um, he may have been actually drafted in by the Highlanders um, kind of for his utility value, and mm-hmm. they might have thought of Squire more as pure number eight. Hmm. Yeah, okay. No, uh, the Highlanders have done us a bit of a favour here and the, the, there aren't too many surprises. Pretty settled team. Um, Shane Christie at open side, Elliot Dixon on the blind. Um, Waratahs, Guildford on the wing with Matt Carraro, just as we all saw it. Uh, I think a few people were wondering around whether Reese Robinson might get a might get a go, but it looks like most of the, the, the coaches have taken a bit of a... Uh, let's wait and see with our league recruits in terms of starting them straight out into Super Rugby, and this is probably another another situation like that. Horn at 13, David Horvitz at, at 12. Um, I, I don't know much about him. Do you know much about him? The media certainly report quite glowingly about him. Uh, I, yeah, I really don't. Okay. Um, once again, I sort of class him in the same category as Walden, but um, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit of a wait-and-see uh, scenario. Sure, and, and as expected, Kirtley Beale takes over from um, Bernard Foley, uh, but we knew that a while yeah. ago. Yeah, we do, and, and obviously he'll have you know massive value, I think, um, yes. because of that. Yeah, absolutely. As, the, as a goal kicker, of course, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, an interesting note uh, is, is Jed Holloway was named at eight. Uh, he's actually a, a lock in fantasy rugby draft. So if you think the Waratahs could possibly get up over the over the Reds, then uh, maybe you maybe you want to pump for Jed Holloway to get amongst some of those running meters and tries and assists that is going to happen. Yeah, and then that could come in a situation uh, like I know that, for instance, I have one one of my teams where I didn't actually draft a lock. I just thought I'd I'd wait and see who got named, and and he's an ideal replacement in that situation where I've, I've not invested in one of the, the, uh, the, you know, sort of the big name locks. Mm. I did the same thing. So I, I, the I literally Steve did Murphy's the same or thing. The, the skeleton. So yeah. And I think, yeah. And it makes a lot of sense in that situation. Uh, I assume, um, Wycliffe Palu is getting in rugby shape. Uh, I didn't, I haven't seen much of a report around him. Yeah. Um, Wycliffe Palu and, and rugby shape are, 
two things you don't often hear <laughs> in the same sentences. So, so um, I'm not quite sure how long uh, that would take. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, let's move on to the Bulls. Um, uh, Francois Brummer gets the nod. Uh, I saw a note to say that uh, Schumann is going to get a little bit of time as well. Um, I think the rest of the back line we kind of knew. I guess maybe the one small eyebrow that was raised was Bjorn Basong over, over Yelingo. Um, but is that just plumping for a bit of experience, you think? Yeah, I mean, he's the, he's the incumbent player. Um, there's already, I guess, a little bit of an experience in that back line, um, with, uh, Gallant and, and Ishmael, um, being named in the side. So it probably makes sense to, to give a little bit of, um, solidity perhaps by making that kind of selection. But I know that there's a lot of people that will be, uh, looking pretty closely at what, um, Gallant does. And I'm assuming I'm mm. pronouncing that correctly and I'm probably <laughs> not. But, uh, yeah, um, because he's gone pretty high in drafts and people are pretty excited about him. I know it's, um, probably from, uh, people outside of South Africa, you know, their experience of him is generally from YouTube clips and those yeah, clips are pretty right. exciting. But, but hey, then again, you, uh, you don't put missed tackles and drop balls on a YouTube clip, do you? So, uh, <laughs> So let's just see what happens. Yeah, indeed. I'm quite excited to see him as well for the first time, stepping up to, to kind of a, the big, 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 especially because it's such an important game first up. That storm is straight out of the bat. Um, a- another example of the of the lock, loose forward um, theory is, is Yanis Kirsten. Um, so he's listed as uh, a lock in, in Fantasy Rugby Draft, and he'll be playing on the blind side for the Bulls. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a bit of the opposite of um, Grant Hatting, who last year was uh, was a loose forward, uh, who played in loose forward, but listed as a lock this year. It's the other way around. He's he's playing as a as a lock, and he's listed as a lock, so he's okay. So it's Yanis Kirsten as the Bulls is the actually the guy that you want to target if you wanted to go down that theory. Mm. And actually, just just kind of on that point, I mean, we which kind of gives you a feel for who's rising. Um, I know it's something that we don't do at the moment, but it'll be interesting to see, uh, I guess, like a, an average start, perhaps, like who's rising and, and who's being picked up. I, I, well, it's probably more relevant, I guess, to who's being picked up in terms of free agency. So, um, yeah, I don't know if that's something that um, that we could uh, perhaps come up with some figures on, but it'd be interesting because... Because I know that these players, uh, like you've just touched on there, that, that aren't, you know, traditional starters. Um, it'd be interesting to see, say, for instance, with people that are coming out of South Africa that perhaps have a bit of more in-depth knowledge, um, whether they, they jump on those kind of bandwagons and, um, we can see that there's, uh, some influence there. Funny you, uh, funny you bring that up, Nathan. Um, so today, uh, I, I spent uh, most of my day um, building exactly that. So we, we, we're going to have uh, percentage start versus bench. We're also going to have owned versus free agency. And we're going to track that over the season in, in each game week. And the first one happens as we take our first cut on Friday night after the lock. And then we're going to put out to say, okay, well, these are your start sit, these are your start bench players. Um, and then we've got a framework for what happens uh, next week to say, okay, after the waiver wire, Yanis Kirsten has increased his percentage ownership by X. But yeah, so excellent. Yeah, so the preseason yeah. we look at ADP. Um, that's our probably our more important statistic or our relevant trend. But now we're going to start to look at ownership percentages and start sit as well, just also to give a little bit of a guide to, to owners to say, should I start him or should I not start him? Yep, and um, I, yeah, I think that'll be really helpful to people. And um, you yeah, see, so people will start to think this is scripted, but um, I can I assure you that we're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're not that organised. <laughs> it's uh, that's just synergy. <laughs> Absolutely. Right, let's move on to the cheaters. Uh, I actually had a note here. I said, looking at the team on paper, it doesn't actually look that bad. Is that what you think as well? I mean, Fred Zalinger coming in at ten. I guess the Ford pack is a little bit inexperienced, but their backline looks pretty good. Yeah, it, it does, and I think we kind of expect points. Uh, out of the cheaters because that's what we've, we've come to expect over the last couple of seasons. And, uh, you know, when you see a guy like, uh, Blomakies, uh, once again, uh, I'll apologize for my pronunciation in advance, but, uh, at fullback, um, I, you know, he'll, he'll do well. I think if you've, if you've got him in your team as a, say, a, a number three outside back, then I think he's someone that's probably worth plugging in. Yeah, uh, I agree. And I think, um, one of the guys in midfield, obviously, Francois Venter, the captain, uh, or, is he actually captain? Is he part of the senior leadership team, or is um, Diago the captain? 
I think it might be. Uh, I I thought he was captain, um, yeah. and that was one of the things that we we sort of liked about that because we knew that he you know was a sort of a guaranteed starter and and a, like a, a massively underrated player, definitely mm. from a fantasy point of view because he's he doesn't come with a sexy name. Um, he's not a headline kind of guy, but. Uh, Scored more points than a lot of people last year. I believe he was almost in the top five, you know, more than guys like Fiki Toa, who obviously come with the bigger reputation. So, yeah, um, yeah, don't underestimate him, I guess, is the is the point here. He's got a good midfield partner as well. They come across from the walls, um, William Small-Smith. Um, I, I've spoken to a lot of guys in South Africa, and they have, they have pretty big raps on him as well. And they say, you know... You know, once you make that change, you know, get out of a different into a new system, it, it usually rejuvenates or it can rejuvenate you, and they expect good things. He's got good pedigree, um, so I guess we'll we'll see how they run out. It's a matter of getting the ball, I suspect, that getting enough parity in that in that forward pack, and as you say, making tackles, which seemed to be their their Achilles heel last season. Um, I've got a note here about Sergio Peterson. I mean, there's a lot of speed out wide. Not a hell of a lot of substance, I guess you'd say to them, but they're all pretty pretty nifty. But I guess Sergio Peterson is a little bit more about him. Uh, well, he, I guess he's he's done it before. I suppose is probably yeah. the only thing we'd say. Uh, but um, I would imagine. I mean, once again, he's just a guy that I've not seen drafted, and I wouldn't expect to see him in too many lineups either. And mm. I think that's probably. Right, um, I think there's probably better options. Um, let, yeah, we'll, we'll see how he goes. Yeah, okay. Let's move on to the Jaguars. Sorry, the Jaguares. Um, I guess the one that had people jumping up and down was uh, Juan Martin Hernandez and where he was. Um, so I had to do a little bit of digging on the on the internet again, um, and all I found really was was a picture of him on a physio table on the 9th of February, and there was a lot of Spanish words in the tweet, so I couldn't really decipher. My Spanish is a little bit rusty, but it looked like where is the nearest train station, which didn't make much sense to me. But either way, it looked like he's coming back from an injury. Uh, you heard anything more about Juan Martin Hernandez? Uh, no, and I, and I don't actually know where the nearest train station is either. I'm, <laughs> as far as I know, there isn't one in Monica, so um, no, I probably can't help you on either score there. Hovercraft, right? Have you been on that yet? They have a hop. Hovercraft? Yeah, Wanak is famous for having a hovercraft, absolutely. Yeah. Is that right? No, yeah. damn, I was just on a boat, mother... Um, a few people have also asked about Chukulek. So we, uh, fullback, so we don't, in case people <laughs> clearly didn't understand my pronunciation, which is understandable, um, the the fullback for, for the Jaguares, he is someone that we didn't necessarily have on our radar when we did our ranking summit. Since then, we've certainly put him back into our equation, Um I, someone asked me Zach Guilford or Tuchelet, and, and that's roughly about the line. I said Guilford, but only because of Waratahs are playing the Reds first up, and they're still in Australia against the Brumbies for their second game, whereas that's not the Jaguars. So that's the only reason I went from. I thought that was roughly around the ranking or the area that I thought. But maybe there's some upside there. What do you think? Uh, if it's a Tuchelet versus Guilford, uh, I'm quite actually quite high on Guilford. And obviously, we've already covered the Warratahs. This game, but uh, yeah, I, I think he'll be well, um, Guilford, yeah. and, uh, and I think he's, he's in an ideal situation. Uh, to Colin, it, um yeah, obviously, you know, he's they're playing away from home, so perhaps you don't like the matchup so much. But uh, mm. I mean, I I guess I've advocated a little bit of caution across um, all the the uh, Jaguars players, um, and you know, I, so it's only fair that I continue that into the season. So. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, I could end up with massive egg on my face, but I've literally not, not drafted any Jaguars player uh, on any of my teams this season. So, yeah, um, maybe I'm being overly conservative, but, uh, yeah, so obviously, you know, I'll be as intrigued as anybody else to see how the, the scam pans out. You didn't grab Mercedes Lewis and Toby Gerhardt? <laughs> Nah, uh, maybe I did have Maurice Jones Drew, sure, but like sure, that, sure. that's sort of c- circa 2011, I believe. So, <laughs> uh, another player that's not there is Montero. Um, Coach Town had a few raps on him coming in as well. Uh, I think we're going to have to brush up on our Spanish if we want to actually give any information to the to the listeners this season, because a lot of this stuff is in Spanish, and a lot of these tidbits are in Spanish. Mm. Well, we haven't brushed up in our English, and somehow we're still been getting through. So that's a good point. English isn't my first language. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to the Reds, uh, no real surprise that Goramaru was on the bench. None for you. 
A uh, little bit for me. Really? Uh, um, especially, <laughs> well, well, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm actually surprised to hear you say that. I mean, so much of the hype coming out of there was what he meant to the Reds uh, in terms of Japanese, you know, audience uh, and the interest that it was generating out of Japan. Yep. You heard even from Sumo in the last podcast, um, I think he described them as... <laughs> so you, you would think, well, what do you need to change that? Well, possibly you have some new players, um, yep. one of which was right there. So, yeah, I, I, I guess from that point of view, I, I am surprised. Um, but at the same time, Carmichael Hunt was brought into the team last year uh, with a, a big reputation, I believe, was part of the leadership groups. Yep. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, look, I, I, uh, I just think I thought from everything that I heard and, and when he actually turned up in Red's camp when we were speaking to Reg and he hadn't turned up at that point, I just thought, well, okay, that, that tends to suggest that he's not going to start the first couple of weeks. And so that, that's why I'm not really surprised about, about that. Um, Liam yeah, Gill, yeah. Out, Liam Gill out for a month. Um, and I would say the other note I've got here is that's a pretty young team. If you look at Nabuli, Tofa, if Satir, um, Jack McIntyre, there's a lot of young kids in there. Yeah, no, I, I think when they're sort of 0 and 3, 0 and 4, that'll be the ideal time to insert Garamaro into the lineup. <laughs> you may have a comment, comment. Richard Richard Graham's playing the long game. <laughs> um, Brumbies, so I guess um, Aiden Tower, 15, uh, Robbie Coleman, not in the squad. We've got to assume that's just injury related right at this stage. Uh, yeah, and uh, I think that's an example of, uh, I mean, we've talked a little bit about handcuffing in the four, but generally about fly half, but I think uh, maybe handcuffing positions, and I think the Brumbies fullback position could be one that's worth handcuffing. So if it's possible that you have uh, Teo or you've got Coleman, maybe looking to get the other, um, and that way you've kind of hedged yourself on that position, um, I sort of feel the same way or did feel the same way about the uh, the Chiefs midfield. But I think it's just one of those positions that, you know, perhaps not a bad one to try and lock down. Yeah, I've done that in a number of drafts. I've got um, because they're available quite late as well. Um, so Robbie Coleman, and I think if Robbie Coleman's fit, he, he's quite a good bench man because he's quite versatile. So I wonder if he's going to going to take that position as well with Aiden Toa starting because I'm not sure that Toa has the the versatility of Coleman. Um, Matt Tamura at twelve. We didn't really talk too much of him about preseason because he's he's heading off and um, at the end of the season, but. Um, I guess he might be the backup kicker to Leo Leofano. Would that be about right? Uh, it's sort of hard to say because I guess we've always had Jesse Mogg in the past doing yeah. the, the backup role, and therefore we've never needed to see if Tamua had that as part of his game. Um, where is he as uh, in terms of position in fantasy rugby draft? Oh, in terms of rankings? No, no, just in terms of position because oh, he's, he's another player. That, sorry, yeah. he, he is a midfielder, right? But, well. And Hold I think, on that. Yeah, yeah, well, it's interesting one because he's another guy that I have not seen drafted, um, you know, the whole way through um, this sort of this period that I had literally had no idea what position he was in. That's a really um, good point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, okay, as a midfielder, yeah, I mean, if if there was some indication that he was going to get some kind of back, uh, sorry, goal kicking role, but uh, let's face it, you probably don't have a spare bench spot at this stage of the season to to invest in a guy like Tamua, who is a you know a, a big outside chance of of assuming some sort of goal kicking role as a midfielder. Yeah, agreed. It's a very strong team. Um, the only thing I would say is that Scott Co is on the bench, maybe a slight dent in the Bumb- Brumbies front row, but still a very very strong team. And I guess we get our first run out and look at Thomas Kibeli and, and see uh, see if the hype train is is justified. Um, anything more from the Brumbies? Uh, no, I mean Kibeli like his. Oh well, actually, sorry, <laughs> I, sh- I should really mention, um, and he should probably be. From now on, if, you know, um, referred to as my boy Itavea, um, who <laughs> I somehow drafted in basically every single team, uh, yep. sort of almost based entirely on uh, Reg's recommendation. Um, so shout out to Reg. Uh, I think I've been stating uh, that he was the NRC Player of the Year. He actually wasn't, but he was, I think, either the NRC Forward of the Year or, or sure. uh, you know, one of the top players in the NRC. I, I think uh, John O'Lance was actually the top. Uh, right. Player in the RC or both of that ways, but but anyway, um, good to see him in there. He's actually been named in the starting lineup, so I think you know there may have been uh, a few questions about that uh, because Jared Butler and Fardy were mm. were also in the mix. But um, yeah, to see him in there um, starting, um, hoping for big things. Itavea 
Players Player of the Year or the the Writers Association Player of the Year or something, I guess. Was that what it was, right? I don't yeah. know, possibly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. It does, doesn't it? All right, the Chiefs, um, I guess since we heard the Sunny Bill news that broke um, earlier in the week or, or last weekend, um, it came fairly apparent that it was going to be um, Tamanavulu, Taminavulu. In the midfield with Charlie Nassai, but I guess one thing that we, we thought, and maybe it goes back to the hesitant to start the league player first up, was Glenn Fasi'i not in the team. Yeah, that that's a genuine surprise to me. Mm. Uh, I, I thought that, and I liked what I saw of him in pre-season. So uh, a lot of the talk was good. Uh, I just wonder whether they've just seen little things in his game during training where they've thought that, oh, perhaps he, you know, there's some things to work on. Uh, and he's not quite ready at this point. I mean, that's the only thing I can think of because they wouldn't have brought him in you know, if they didn't think he had the talent. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, that, I mean, that, and that's that's all I can think of at this stage. So I, I would be surprised to not see him in the team at some point. But at the same time, if you give a guy a shot at this level and they're all talented guys, you know, there's nothing to say that um, that Stevenson, you know, won't uh, make something out of that opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. So we actually ranked Sean Stevenson quite highly because we kind of like what he did in the ITM. Um, and he was very, very impressive. But mostly playing at fullback when Damian McKenzie was playing at 10. But, but, but nonetheless, he's got the talent, he's got the skill. I just, yeah, um, well, go on. Oh, sorry, I was just going to say, yeah, but I, I, we, I guess kind of noticed that he was highly drafted because, uh, sorry, um, ranked because as the drafts tended to work through, you would see him still sitting there somewhere mm. near the top of the board. Mm. Um, people tended, Tended to steer clear, and I think a lot of that was related to some of the talk that they'd heard about about the fish. So uh, chances are he's out there on the uh, in free agency. So um, yeah, I mean, could be something worth looking at. That's for sure. It's interesting if you look at this backline versus the team that they're playing, the Crusaders backline. They're just chalk and cheese. <laughs> it's quite funny, but um, yeah, there's a lot of lot of lightning players and a lot of really really blockbuster players in this Chiefs back line with, with Caballo, Cruden, Lowe, Nato, Tamani Vulu, Stevenson and then Damian McKenzie to cap it off. Mm. That's got points in it, I would have thought. It sure does, yep. And Q, a, Q a 9-6 loss in Christchurch. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, I guess everything else is fairly predictable. Sumo said he, he wasn't 100% sure about Tom Sanders' last run out, and I, I tended to agree with him, but they've gone with him um, at 8. I, I wonder if that's just a Lack of other options. Yeah, it, it could well be. I mean, it's not somebody that I'm looking to start in any league. No. Okay, move on to the Crusaders, who, who they're playing against. So I guess the big question was around the, the fly half, and it's, it's gone to Richie Mwanga. Yep. Uh, first cab off the rank. Um, I had actually heard at one point that, that Marty Mack had played last week with the development squad, which kind of suggested that he was a little bit on the outer. Um, mm. I don't I don't know where that came from. I don't know if you've heard that. No, I, I haven't heard that at all. Yeah, but yeah, okay. It stands to it reason, could be completely, though. Yeah, it could be completely unfounded, but it just sort of, you know, perhaps that was an early indication that, that this wasn't as surprising as some people thought. I mean, you you predicted it. I think um, quite rightly it's, it's turned out to be the case. Uh, the midfield, uh, interestingly enough, <laughs> kind of stuck with... Uh, the um, not so um, winning combination that they had last week, um, but mm. hey, yeah, you know, what do you make of that? Yeah, I, I I don't know what to make of that apart from lack of resources, and they thought that David Havili could play fifteen better than anyone else in the squad, so they they more or less forced into that position of playing Wainui at twelve and Fonatia. They'll swap around, I suspect, as well, come a little bit closer. But um, I, I guess it's a little bit of um, Todd Black. It has gone. Back to his darts on the dartboard with Johnny Mackellar as well <laughs> on the on the wing ahead of Johnny McNichol, which is out of everything in this Crusaders lineup, that is probably the biggest surprise to me. It, re- it really is, and uh, because uh, it, you know every indication was that um, that Johnny McNichol would would get that gig, and John, Johnny Johnny is, is someone that that I've always liked, um, and it's someone mm. that I've actually drafted, yeah. but, I, but I drafted him kind of looking towards the future. I definitely didn't expect to see him in there now, because I've actually been talking Johnny McNichol up ahead of him, despite <laughs> what I've yeah. done in the draft, so I've kind of, it's, it's sort of do as I say, don't do as I do, I guess um, to a certain extent, but uh, yeah, I, I'm surprised, but um, I'm actually interested in the Havili thing, because um, he's someone that I've taken a flyer on in one particular league. Do you think that he's worth a start? I mean, I'm just wondering kind of what level you actually think he's at. Yes, I do. Now, I'll have to qualify that. Um, who would I start him over? 
Uh, well, what about Stevenson, for instance? Uh, yep, I'd start him over Stevenson. Okay, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, but, it, but it is around about that point, I think. Um, mm-hmm. I, I just think he, he will get some few running meters, and I, I wonder in the back of my mind if he might take some long-range kicks as well. I'm not sure. Right. Okay, that's interesting. What about Guilford? I'll probably still go with Guilford just for the matchup against the Reds. Yeah, I think so too. So these Crusaders Chiefs games invariably uh, the Chiefs figure out how to shut down the Crusaders, and it turns into a bit of a scrap, and um, they try and rile the Crusaders up, and, and and just you know pulling back and nuggling ahead of the ball, taking out people to right. It's good. It's, it's an effective way to play, and they're really really good at it. And these games tend to not be high scoring, and especially. Down in, down in Christchurch. But I wonder this early on in the season because it's a bit sunnier, it's the middle of summer still, whether whether that may actually be a bit of a, a variation to the rule. Right, um, that's actually all the, all the teams that we have. Is there anything that you wanted to to kind of pull out out of the, out of the team sheets that we've seen so far? I know we haven't really got to... It's a bit bit of a suck it and see for the first kind of Thursday podcast. It's quite difficult to figure out how quickly or how how much depth we have to cover each of the teams. We haven't really gone into any sort of these are your top tens or who's your studs or anyone like that. But is there anyone that you wanted to kind of say um, that might perform a little bit better than expectations? Uh, well, I guess we've already mentioned it a couple of times, but I actually do like as time's gone by. I've started to come around more to the idea that Zach Guilford actually uh, could really do something over there. Mm. Um, you know, like straight into the starting lineup, they've obviously, you know, they, they rate him. Um, mm. It's a high performing team um, and has been for the last couple of years. And I think that, you know, somebody like him on the end of that back line, um, you know, potentially uh, chiming in outside uh, Israel Falau um, coming into the line. Uh, that's going to have uh, quite a lot of value, and we we know he can finish. Um, there's no doubt about that, and we also know he's he's got talent. So you know he someone that you've picked up, you know possibly as even as your third sort of outside back, or maybe as your first sub, um, but really could light it up. I think. Yep, that's a good call, and I think it's certainly. You know, I guess the question was whether he was going to start or not, but now that he is starting, I think you can safely put him in your lineup and, and feel pretty confident that he'll go well in and a, and a really tasty matchup too. Um, for me, it's it's Aiden Toa. Um, similar similar reasoning, uh, I think. Now that he's got the start ahead of Coleman and Coleman's not there, that I think there's a, there's an opportunity for him um, to, to show us what he's got, and he'll want to he'll want to solidify the place in that team. Mm. And and I guess just just in a sort of wider view, uh, this week's games uh, going to be really interesting because there's going to be guys that perhaps are a little bit unfancied that get a shot that actually take that opportunity, and it could be that next week when you you come around to to the waiver wire and and you're looking at free agency that that you know you need to strike early. So I'd say that you know do do pay attention to these games if if you get a chance to to get in front of uh, the TV and, and check the games out on. Sky Sports or, or Super Sports or Fox, then then definitely uh, you know pay attention. And if you spot somebody, then uh, yeah, I think that this first week of waiver wire could be key. Yeah, absolutely. And I was going to make a note of that is that our Monday podcast will will be a good insight to looking at who you need to pick up on the waiver wire, who's performed, who's come out of nowhere, who's that king's player, that type of thing. Um, but you want to cast your own eye over it as well. So I guess. I, I, First weekend, I'm not going to have to convince you to watch a lot of rugby, <laughs> but yeah, I think if you wanted to, if you wanted to really make headway into that waiver wire on Tuesday night, it's probably if you can consume as much as you can. Um, just a, just a quick note about the reviews. Uh, I mean, not, they're great to have. Not only do they make us laugh, but but it spreads our web a little bit wider. Um, we get better informed on on players and injuries and resting and coaches and overall strategy, and ultimately that, that benefits you, the listener. So uh, keep the reviews coming, get more people listening to it, and we, we kind of spread that web a little bit wider. And also lastly, just a quick favour again, we're, same problem or well, same thing that we need to, to get on top of is the junk mail. So if you could all just add us, uh, take two minutes to add us as a contact, and, and that's how the likes of Google and Outlook learn that that we aren't uh, we aren't spamming you. And it is, it is pretty important. I mean, I, I mentioned it earlier on that 
you know, I knew that Tavita Lee had been picked up on our waiver wire, and it, and it kind of prompts you to think, okay, well, there's a player being cut. Um, I need to go and figure out, you know, why has he done that? I need to look at the team. And there's also trade proposals that come through to you that would hate you to miss out on. So, yeah, you can control your preferences anyway in your account online, but in terms of um, at least getting to your inbox, yeah, just see if you can add us as a contact. Um, that's about all the time we have for today. Um, thanks for downloading and listening. I'm Bruce Wilkinson. He's Nathan Mossman from the bottom of Lake Wanaka. <laughs> Insert Charlie Knight, I comment here. Melty or a pedo.